With all the reporting about Brittany Griner's happy return and controversy over the decision to leave Paul Whelan behind, very little has been reported about another American in a Russian jail, Mark Fogel, who taught many children of diplomats in Moscow and was arrested a year ago and sentenced to 14 years for bringing cannabis cartridges into Russia, he said, to treat a chronic back pain. Joining me now is Anne Fogel, Mark Fogel's sister and former U.S. ambassador to Russia, Michael McFall, who is a friend of Mark Fogel's, and uh, he taught, he, my, Mike, he taught your children in high school, so I know you know him well. Um, and first of all, we've been th thinking and talking to Mike McFall for months now about your brother. Tell me about your reaction to Brittany Griner's release. Well, of course, I'm delighted that, that Brittany got home. I, I, of course, I wish that Mark had been on the plane, too, as well. I mean, it's, um, it, it seemed like um, it seemed like he should have been on the on the plane for who they got in exchange. Have you heard anything from the Biden administration? You or his wife Jane, other family members? Uh, no, we did talk to Jake Sullivan in October, as well as Wendy Sherman. And what did they tell you about why, for instance, why your brother they has not been considered wrongfully detained? I don't understand that. I've been trying to get we answers to it. We don't understand it either, and, and they've not given a lot of satisfying answers. Um, either they there's a quota on how many people can be wrongfully detained, and they have too many balls in the air, or perhaps um, they believe that he is lawfully um, imprisoned there, and they believe that 14 years is a is an appropriate sentence for um, 17 grams of medical cannabis. Um, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to imagine that, but that, that is what we've come down to. Ambassador McFall, you know the way the State Department works. You understand these legal distinctions. Can you explain why Mark Fogel is not on the administration's radar for, to be negotiated for a prisoner swap? Well, I can tell you that he is on their radar. Uh, in fact, even just yesterday, I spoke to senior White House officials about his situation. I can explain to you why he does not have that designation. Uh, he's most certainly yeah, wrongfully detained. That, that, the 14-year the sentence he got, nobody believes that that was legitimate in any way. I've never spoken to anybody in the U.S. government that thinks that's legitimate. But I do not understand the, the definitional the reason why he's not on the list. But I hope that we don't we don't have to worry about that list, uh, and we don't have to worry about that designation. Uh, he, like everybody else, including now Paul Whelan, should be out of Russia, uh, and we should do everything. I hope our government will do everything to get him out of the jail cell he's in right now. Ambassador, people are asking: Did we get outmaneuvered by Vladimir Putin here in these negotiations? Why did we turn over someone as valuable to them as Victor Boot, who could still harm the United States if he resumes his career of illegal arms sales to terror groups and the like, or helping Putin in Ukraine? So why would we turn over Victor Boot for a star basketball player, you know, who we all wanted back, but she has no foreign policy or national security importance to Russia? Well, without question, the best deal would have been three innocent Americans for one real criminal. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind, and I've had that conversation for months. Everybody agrees with that in the United States. The problem is Putin didn't agree. And so my understanding of what happened is they negotiated, they negotiated, they got to the end of the negotiations, and it was either take the deal on the table or no deal. And that's the tragic way that diplomacy works. Uh, by the way, there are a lot of other negotiations that work that way, too, but most certainly in diplomacy, including when I personally did these kinds of negotiations, you get to that moment, sometimes you walk away, and most certainly we did in the Obama administration, walked away sometimes, and sometimes you think we are better off as a nation to take this deal in hand, even though it most certainly was not the deal that we wanted. And, and Fogel, tell me about your brother and how he's doing. Is he in a in, well, I, is he in a penal colony? Where is he? Yes, he's in a town north of Moscow called Rybinsk. I just spoke with him this morning. 
Um, and it was, um, he's hanging on. I mean, I think that it was a bit, um, he's trying to stay hopeful and he is um, doing his back stretching and he's, um, he is, um, he's an extremely adaptable person um, and he is trying to adapt to the situation. I, um, he's, he's an incredible individual, really. I kind of, uh, if there were, if there were a hall of fame for history teachers, he would be in it. Well, he's learning uh, the sad facts of his own history here. How do you feel about the U.S. government? Um, I, I have to have faith in, in the administration, of course. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit disenchanted with them at times. Uh, I feel like they have not given us a straight um, story on the wrongful detainment um, designation. Um, but we're, we're hopeful that he still gets it. And Ambassador McFall, what concerns would you have? You know everything about Victor Boot from your work in, in national security, about what he could still do against the United States now that he's a free man. Well, to be perfectly clear, we arrested him when I was in the Obama administration at the White House. That was a great day when he was convicted. I remember it well. Uh, he's a dangerous, bad man that has done very bad things for his entire career. That said, he's also a diminishing asset to Vladimir Putin. Uh, I, I don't. I think we shouldn't overestimate uh, what he's going to give to their team. They got a lot of other bad guys, Andrea, already on the team. They're on the field in Ukraine. Uh, I don't think they need Victor Boot to do the damage they're doing right now. Mike McFaul. Tragically, yes, that's probably true. Ann Fogel, thank you very much. We'll stay in touch and um, make sure that your brother is part of this continuing saga, because that's the only way that they'll pay attention. Yes. Thank you.